Back in the mandatory work from home days, I found that this ferocious four-legger wasn't always supportive of me trying to pay attention during Zoom calls, so naturally I decided this called for a project to try and keep him distracted. That led to this little laser turret toy build. It dances a laser pointer around thanks to a couple of RC servos and some Arduino pseudo-random number generating, and it's done a pretty good job of providing feline entertainment since. In fact, anytime I just pick the thing up, he comes running. But there's one thing about laser pointer toys for cats that's always kind of felt off to me, and that's that there's no real win condition. I feel like it's gotta be anticlimactic to smack that dancing red dot only to have nothing happen. So for some time I've been mulling over a revisit to this one to add some sort of a conclusion to the laser game. And this is the first swing at making that happen. Unfortunately, as I'll be diving into here shortly, some of my assumptions during design resulted in me not feeling like this version's quite ready for prime time. So this won't be replacing the original just yet. But I thought it might be fun to take a look at the build thus far and talk about some of my lessons learned from it. But before diving into Gen 2 and what I want to change with it, let's take a quick look at the original. The laser module is just a laser pointer LED that I took apart and soldered some leads onto the driver board. I then glued it into this printed housing that attaches directly to the servo horn of this micro servo. That printed housing also has a little strain relief loop for the laser wires to limit tugging on the solder joints directly. And that lovely bit of hot gluing on the back of the board is there for the same reason. The servo attaches to this funky looking bracket, and that funky looking bit up front is actually intended to be functional. It's a diaphragm flexure with a jewel bearing pivot in the center, and it's there to provide some additional support to the servo bearing and gears. Not sure the extra support's really needed, but I just wasn't super comfortable cantilevering the laser off of those small plastic gears. The unnecessarily aerodynamic tail thingy is pretty much just a cosmetic cover for the backside of the servo. I had just gotten my first resin printer and was having some fun with the smooth surface textures it could offer. Back to the functional bits, in addition to having the attachment points and bearing support for the micro servo, this mount also has these features on the lower end that sit inside of this radial bearing and attach to the servo horn of the rotation servo inside the housing. That servo is held by its mount tab sandwiched between the bearing support and the housing. And the housing has spaces on either side of the servo for holding a tray of AAA batteries on one side and the control board on the other. I think that pretty much covers everything on Gen 1, so I wanted Gen 2 to be a bit taller also. But the main thing I wanted was a more clear indication of victory, so of course that means I wanted it to launch a couple of treats if the red dot got caught. I'm far too lazy and code challenged to do this with some sort of elaborate imaging system or the like, so instead, I decided I'd have the program occasionally shine the laser on a pressure plate with a limit switch under it. If the cat hits the pressure plate when the laser's pointed at it, this overkill flinging mechanism releases and launches a treat out the other side. The treat flinger mechanism is built into the main motor mount inside, and it's basically just a catapult. No pun intended. The open end is the treat cavity, and on the opposite end are a couple of radial bearings that ride on a 5mm dowel pressed into the motor mount. There's a second dowel pressed in next to it that serves as both the attachment point for these coil springs as well as the end stop for the swinging arm. The other end of the coil spring is attached to the dowel that's pressed through the body of the arm. And at 90 degrees to that spring retainer dowel is one last dowel that extends from the side of the arm, and this dowel is what engages the release mechanism. That pin rides along the underside of this hub that attaches to the upper servo horn. That upper servo controls the elevation axis, or pitch, of the laser, but more on how it does that here shortly. The important part here is that that servo has a 270 degree range of motion, and I'm only using 180 of those degrees for actual elevation control. So at 20 degrees beyond 180 degrees of rotation is this notch cut into the hub, and that's the point where the dowel gets set free to do its thing. I won't lie, I've entertained myself quite a bit with my new little catapult here, and it's one subsystem on this thing that I plan to keep mostly unchanged for the next rev. But, since I am planning to make some other revisions elsewhere, there are a couple of things I'm probably going to modify in this little guy just because I can. The first is to add some sort of cushioning on the dowel that stops the rotation. I've launched it a good many times without issue, but I just feel a little iffy about the impact load it sees, and I worry it may ultimately be a failure point. The second, which is really more a change that I plan to make throughout the design, is to call on the folks over at PCBWay, the sponsor of this video, to help me out in making some of the parts. For the catapult arm, I could even make use of their metal 3D printing or CNC machining services to make it robust enough to definitely not need that cushioning on the end stop. And I'll definitely be looking to them to help me clean up this perf board circuit with a proper printed circuit board. And they offer all kinds of options for 3D printing and plastics with both FDM and resin materials available that would work great for the various other bits and pieces I'll be diving into here shortly. If you want to let PCBWay help you out with the fab for whatever you're working on, check out the link down below in the description. Diving back into the laser turret, let's take a look at what else is attached to that elevator elevation servo I mentioned earlier. On the original version, I just directly drove the elevation axis with that micro servo. But because I wanted to make this servo pull double duty,
Duty with the treat release, I decided to instead go with a cam and follower type of thing for this time around. And while I do plan to stick with the use of a cam and follower concept for the next rev, this is one area that I do intend to make some changes. In the current design, the follower is this dowel pen attached to the laser holding cat head, and the cam profile lifts it through a total range of 90 degrees of rotation. Instead of going with what I would think of as a more traditional cam lobe, which extends radially from the camshaft, I decided to try out a cam profile that has both axial and radial variation in the profile. There wasn't a specific reason for the choice, other than just kind of wanting to experiment with it. While it's worked just fine, I'll likely switch this over to a simpler radial cam profile primarily because they're easier for me to model in Fusion. But this now takes us to the first important change that I don't feel is quite as optional, and that is to address how the follower gets preloaded against the cam. One of the reasons I went with this longer than necessary steel dowel for the follower was because my intent was to rely on gravity to maintain that preload. I wanted to keep the center of gravity of the whole rotating cat head assembly on this side of the pivot throughout the 90 degrees of movement, and I oversized the dowel beyond what was really needed to help ensure some margin on that. However, I underestimated the mass of the wire and connectors and assumptions for that, and as a result, that CG can indeed swing over the pivot and never come back down. I was able to overcome this on the current build by attaching some elastic string between the strain relief points I already had on both the outer shell and cat head parts for the electrical wires, but these weren't really designed for that kind of repeated cyclic loading. And while it works okay as is, I'd prefer to give this whole cam follower configuration another look. The rest of this subsystem will probably remain mostly unchanged, including the laser mouth cat head itself. It's moderately terrifying looking, and I love it. I'll likely also keep the method of powering and controlling the laser itself. I printed in some wire guides into the back of the cat head that allows these bits of bare wire to contact the laser pointer electrical contacts. Using a zip tie to permanently keep the button pressed, and replacing the battery compartment with these electrical leads, allows me to easily turn the laser on and off from the microcontroller. So all I have to do to cycle the laser is turn on and off a supply of 3 volts since it was originally powered by two AAA batteries in series. And that 3 volts is coming from the control board which takes us back to the motor mount inside. From previous videos, I know how impressed folks are by my beautiful electronics work, so here's a glamour shot of the control board for this one. Now you see why I definitely plan to sketch up a PCB layout and send it off to PCBWay to reduce the spaghetti for the next one. The connections on the board are for the laser, the limit switch on the pressure plate, the on-off switch mounted on the bottom, and the two 3-pin connections for the RC servos. The final connection, up here in the top corner, is for a 5 volt supply, which I'm currently using a 5 volt wall wart supply. But for the next rev, I'm thinking I might want to swap this out for something like an RC rechargeable battery or the like. But that'll mean I'll need to add some sort of access panel for swapping and recharging. I'll probably also use that same access panel to be able to connect to the MCU for playing around with the program without having to disassemble the base. It's not strictly needed, since the original build I haven't changed the code at all since first assembling it, but I don't have a good feeling for the timing on treat chances and such, so I figure I may want to have the freedom to tinker. The overall structure of the motor mount, with the two servos attached on each end, along with the integrated catapult and control board mount, has worked nicely, so I'll likely stick with that design along with how it attaches to the shell with these two tabs and corresponding M4 heat sets. On the front of the shell is the pressure plate, which has two dowels pressed into holes in the door, and those dowels sit within V-grooves in the sides of the shell. The door has this lip that sticks out on the inside, which sits against the limit switch. Limit switch sits between two tabs built into the shell, and it's held in position with a couple of M2 screws that are just threaded into the plastic. On top of those tabs sit a couple of compression springs that help preload the door closed. This setup has seemed to work just fine, so it'll likely be pretty much copy and paste over to the revised design. And with that, the only other part to take a look at is what's attached to that lower servo, which, in order to sound cool, I'll call the azimuthal axis. The bearing for the azimuthal axis is built into the shell and base parts in the form of a V-groove around the perimeter of the shell and a cylindrical channel around the perimeter of the base, and filled in with a bunch of 9.5mm steel balls, aka slingshot ammo. Definitely a bit overkill for the purpose, but I went with this to give a nice bit of weight down low in the assembly to keep it stable. Plus, if you've seen some of my other builds, you'll know this particular style of bearing is one of my go-tos. The base has a hole pattern in the center that mates up to the servo horn. That works to transfer the torque to rotate everything, but also provides the preload to hold that bearing assembly together and close everything up. This bit is another that I think seems to work just fine, and probably won't change much. But one thing I do want to improve with it is the cable management. Currently both the power supply and wires from the on-off switch have to route from the stationary base to the board that's rotating with the motor. In the current build, I just handled this by providing some wrapped slack while assembling, but this definitely doesn't give me the warm fuzzies of confidence, so I'd like to come up with a more predictable cable guide to make sure the thing doesn't snag on anything. If you have any suggestions for cable guide approaches for rotary axes like these, I'd love to hear them.
The only other thing I'm likely to modify is some way of isolating the treat release a bit so that it can't be accessed by reaching in through the shell. I put the treat release on the side opposite the pressure plate to try to make sure cat paws won't be nearby when it's doing its catapulting, but I want to make sure there's no chance of accidental releases when he inevitably tries to cheat at the game. So yeah, that's about it for the update on my attempts at feline distraction. I'll include links down below to details and models, and if you have any questions or comments, I'd welcome them. Thanks to PCBWay for their support, and if you want to see how they can help boost your fabrication options, check out the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and happy building!